Hi, everybody. It's Alana from Praying Christian Women here with Jamie. We hope you guys are doing well. It is Monday. We're almost to the end of the month. Yeah, and I feel so bad because you just dropped your coffee and you didn't go make more. Do you need to I make did not go make more. Started? No, but if you if I like start falling asleep mid sentence, you'll know why. I'll I'll try to like, <laughs> you'll pour, okay, let me hold my cup out. Hold your cup out. Yeah. Pour this, yeah. <laughs> the keyboard is right underneath there. That would not be a good idea. No, oh, I'm, that's true. I'll actually spill it. That's I'm not yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, you know what? One real quick thing. I'm expecting a call from our, our son's doctor, so I might need us to pause real quick right in the yeah, middle. Yeah, no but, problem. If I hear the phone ring, I'll pause it and we'll yeah. jump back on after. Yeah. So how was your weekend? It was good. It's funny how the days run together more so now than oh, for sure. before. I mean, because it, my kids will be asking, what day is it today? And oh, now, yeah. It's really hard to keep track. Yeah, but we had another great church service online, which there were no, now that we have a state mandated yes. shelter in place, mm -hmm. um, there's one, but the pastor lives at the church, so he's there. And then they oh, had like a few family members that did like a music thing. And so it was pretty cool how they've been piecing it together. And they did something similar for the youth group. The youth pastor um, plays drums and his daughter sings. And so they did like a worship That's night for the cool. youth group. Yeah. It's been really neat how they've been using some pretty creative ways mm -hmm. to continue to abide by guidelines, but to offer some online encouragement yeah. and stuff. And my husband and I were joking, like if we had a bunch of extra money, we should invest mm -hmm. in Zoom. I mean, you know, shout out to oh, Zoom. Yeah. We use Absolutely. Zoom meeting for our recording. We've used it forever. We used Zoom before it was cool. Yeah. Totally. We used Zoom before anybody else knew what it was. <laughs> Do you think that you could actually, could we accurately say that we actually were the ones that made Zoom cool? No. Okay. I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> I, I did hear some funny news about Zoom. Like, I guess there's this other publicly traded company that has Zoom in the name and uh -oh. people were getting confused, like, because they had that exact same thought, like, let's invest in Zoom. And so I forget what had to happen. I don't know if they like voluntarily changed their name, but it turned into this kind of like happy accident for them, but not for everybody else who thought that they were, you know, investing, investing in the real Zoom. <laughs> so, I mean, my question is, so we, we use Zoom for free. I don't know if you use Zoom for free because I know you use it for other stuff too. So mm -hmm. maybe you have the upgraded plan. I do. But yeah. I don't have the upgraded plan. And as far as I know, most of the teachers and stuff, maybe the school districts are getting the upgraded yeah. plan. I would think they would need to because like you and I can talk on Zoom on the free plan yeah. like for 24 hours and yeah. it doesn't matter. But like if we wanted to have a three-way conversation or 20-way with, you know, a teacher, then you need the free plan or else you're limited to like 45 minutes or something like that. Yeah. And I learned the hard way. The first, it was one of the first interviews that we ever did back when we were prevailing. Oh, I remember podcast. that. Mm -hmm. And I had my two friends that um, had a really amazing testimony to share, but they logged on individually. As two different, yeah. And it mm -hmm. kicked us off after 40 minutes. Yeah, and I thought, yeah. oh no, what's going on? So yeah, I learned that the hard way. But mm -hmm. Now you know. Yeah, now I know. Anyway. No, Zoom is quite convenient. I was yeah. talking to my grandparents. It was super cute. They were um, like... You know, it's so funny because until my husband and I started doing the Myers-Briggs personality trait training kind of in depth, I never would have thought this, but my grandma is very much an extrovert, oh. but it's funny because she's, you know, like she's very quiet and demure and like in, in a lot of ways you wouldn't just expect. So she's the like Japanese American equivalent of an extrovert, um, which is different than the American equivalent of an extrovert. Right. <laughs> But I realized like, wow, grandma's a total extrovert, like classic textbook extrovert, which I never would have put together. And they were trying to figure out how to connect to their churches, like live stream or whatever. And, it's like, and I think we might need the YouTube, but I don't think we've got the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, everybody has the YouTube. You just need to know where to get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's too funny. But it is nice that we've got those opportunities. So our pastor, I don't know what was going on, but we had to watch the church live streamed like um on its side like the camera was 
on its side, but for some reason they couldn't just like, you know, rotate the camera 90 degrees. <laughs> so you almost got a little bit dizzy at the end being like, you know, with your brain trying to adjust because, you know, the pastor's standing up, but he looks like he's lying down. <laughs> or standing on the wall. Yeah, yeah. It's, it Magnetic was boots. Oh, that's kind of funny. Well, and I've seen some of that, like in some of the class meetings my kids have done, some mm -hmm. of the some of the kids are sideways. And I, and I think, you know, but you assume, I think in this day and age that devices will correct would kind of that. know i know like if i yeah. take a picture on my phone and the picture's rotated but then i post a picture on facebook it, it knows to, yeah yeah <laughs> but anyway, anyway thank the lord for good technology even if we're still all kind of struggling to figure it out no well and these kinds of meetings like the the church thing has set our sundays apart and has allowed yeah. us to mm -hmm. really honestly make sunday more of a sabbath than it ever had been before right right because typically a sunday is like you know serving or doing something which is great mm -hmm. too but to be there just sitting as a family we've had more yeah. family spiritual conversations than we've probably ever had with all five that's of really us really cool in the room together so it's been kind of neat yeah that's very neat it so has. in general would you say like your family's kind of stress level and things is like you guys all hanging in there okay and the kids aren't getting too lonely or anything yeah i think our stress level is pretty good i mean i kind of have it's funny how you know when you're in a vacuum like we all kind of are mm -hmm. it I, I I find that I have to, um, when I'm alone with my thoughts, that's when I have to, like, I can really, okay. uh, and maybe mm -hmm. everyone is that way. You kind of can get, mm -hmm. get in a bad place if you fill your mind with too much negativity. So I actually didn't even check the news all weekend. Wow. And, that's impressive. I know. And I didn't miss it. And by yesterday evening, my husband was like, you know, Alaska's up to 102 cases or whatever it was by then. And so I started looking on the news and, um, and there were some stories that I read that did start to make me feel kind of fearful and got me out of the wrong, you know, out of the right perspective. Mm -hmm. And I actually created on my on my phone. I have we ha I have an iPhone, so I have Apple Music. I I created a playlist called Joy Mix, mm -hmm. and it's there are certain songs that I put on there that are just like they really like they remind me of God's power. That's they cool. Remind me of God's work even in difficult situations. Some of the songs are not particularly joyful, but they're songs that have really like lifted me up in a in a positive way during difficult times um and anyway it's just really that's cool. really cool so are those playlists shareable to. like i don't have a smartphone so i wouldn't know but like could you post a link and other people could listen to your joy mix i don't know i'll have to look into that i'm not very technological or do you I'm need the youtube for that you might need the yeah, youtube you might not have the youtube so you might not <laughs> so cute okay so playlists i bet you can you can share anything right that'd be fun yeah so let me look at my joy mix uh anyway i'll figure it out i'm trying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my thing isn't clicking oh it doesn't say sh share we can figure I'll it figure, out if it's yeah, yeah. if it I'll works it'll it work out. yeah but anyway Bye. That's all of that cool to say, idea. I have little moments like that, but overall, mm -hmm. I've been really positive. Um, how about you and your family? How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Um, I mean, it's a pretty good all things considered. Actually, all things considered, I'd say very good. There are still some hardships for sure. Um, you know, now that our youngest is kind of up to feeling active again after having his tonsils out. I think mm. I would say probably at least right now, the last few days, he's probably having the most struggle. I mean, I feel terrible for him. I mean, he he submitted himself to the surgery, which the recovery was probably like at least five times harder than we were anticipating. Yeah. And then like when he came back to feeling normal, we're smack dab in like total isolation and he's he's our really energetic social guy so it's hard um you know thankfully he's over the physical recovery side of things but i'm sure there's still just residual stress from 
that surgery, from the recovery, and now just yeah. all the stress of this. So, you know, I, I feel like to a smaller degree, you know, the people we talked about who were like the, like the idea to ride racers, who didn't really quite get what was going on until like the race is over. I almost right. feel like that's, he almost had his waking up to it this past week where like now that he's feeling better, he actually realizes, oh, I, I can't get together with my friends and yeah. everything is different. So, and then he's also... I feel bad because he's trying, I feel like he's, he's put a lot of pressure on himself to be kind of the family cheerleader. Aww. Like, you know, like he kind of has this um, internal motivation to like make sure the rest of us stay happy, yeah. which I really appreciate. But every once in a while, when you kind of get into that mindset, I think sometimes you can just build up and build up and then like things explode. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Aww. I, I struggle with that sometimes that cheerleader mentality like, mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when my kids were really little, I would try to, um, like, you know, the baby time, I would try to insulate my husband from the effects of the newborn stage yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Or like, if he gets like with this, cause he's, he's had some moments of, mm -hmm. of feeling kind of mm -hmm. like, wow, this is, this is a big deal. Yeah. And, uh, and I feel like I have to counter that and, uh -huh. you know, and you don't always have to. So, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I know that's. That is a heavy burden, and it does take its toll internally over time. You for don't sure. realize it, but it does. Well, we'll yeah. definitely be praying for him. He's No, I'd appreciate that, yeah. yeah. I'd say the rest of us are doing well. We did a whole family game of Risk yesterday, and my, my kids husband took asking, over the world. Yes, we, my, my kids have been asking for Risk for a while. We need to do that as a family. We've been doing chess. I'm not oh, good at fun. chess, but even our six-year-old, she's really into it. And so it was funny because, so my oldest, my husband plays and he's, he's pretty good, but he hasn't played like for a mm -hmm. long time mm -hmm. regularly, but our oldest is really good at it. Our middle one got really into it this year through school. They had a unit on chess That's in cool. one of his classes. And um, so my daughter and I, the other night, the boys were watching a movie and my daughter is not into whatever movie it was. So she asked if I would play chess with her. So we're kind of learning as we go because I'm oh, not very good. I'm, I still have to ask like, well, can the pawns move backwards? Stuff like oh, that. Wow. You know? uh -huh, uh -huh. And so it's been fun. Like those are things that we just never like, you know, camping, you wouldn't be doing some yeah. of that stuff, but we wouldn't be doing that stuff. So it's been really fun. Yeah. So we're due for a risk night. I wonder if our families could do like an like an uh, a video risk like if there's such well, a way I know I know you can do like there's computerized risk mm -hmm. at the very least yeah. um and we already talked about the boys doing chess that would be fun yeah yeah we're a big chess family I, I've already decided like if I were the first lady you know how they each kind of pick sort of their projects yeah um I mean, obviously, knowing me, I would want to do something like really heavy, like let's say trafficked girls and women and that sort of thing, or, right. you know, let's increase support for bad arrives. But if it had to be something that like was just a feel good thing, it would actually probably be, um, I'd, I'd have two. One would be chess in the classrooms. Like mm -hmm. every single kid knows how to play chess and plays chess well. Mm -hmm. And the other would be um, like programs for reading. Like basically it would be like, why can't I think of this? Um, <laughs> once I say it, you're gonna be like, why is she stuttering over her words? So basically it would be some way to encourage like people to read to other people, like national read aloud days. So it would be like the kid shows up at the nursing home with, with five books and he's going to read them to the lady yes. there, or the kids are going to show up. Like I know our animal shelter, you can like read books read to, to a animal. dog. Yeah. So something to do with that. But you know, like I, we really like chess as a family. It's, um, Honestly, like in my mind, it's kind of the perfect game in terms of just, you know, it takes, um, it takes the exact right amount of brain energy and you can play it at multiple levels. Um, I don't know. I really like chess. Yeah. I'm really growing to love it. I I'm having mm -hmm. a good time with it and mm -hmm. I, it has to be so good for your brain. I'm always, because yeah. I have a family history of dementia, I'm oh, always sure. yeah. looking for ways to grow my brain mm -hmm. and and create Definitely. new, you know, new connections and stuff. And that yeah. has to be a really good way. Sudoku is And really good. One. Oh, I like Sudoku too. Really good focus for kids um, as well in terms of like hyperactivity types of things. Yeah. Like, like I said, kind of the perfect game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so one thing I'm struggling with, and I'm trying to figure out if this is just me being 
me. Okay. Um, I will give you a background. So, well, so my, my dilemma is I am starting to feel like I should donate blood. And I've thought about this. I mentioned it if, like last week and my mm -hmm, original mm -hmm. consensus was I'm not going to take that risk for my family, for the people mm -hmm. we're interacting with. But I read an article that was about some, um, okay, I, I'm going to get this wrong, but they were, I want to say they're foreign nationals living in the United States who mm -hmm. are doctors in their country but aren't certified yet to practice to medicine practice here, here, right? who are just dying to help. They want to go out mm -hmm. there and be doctors mm -hmm. and they can be trained and there are programs in place that are, they have to wait to, you know, get trained up, but mm -hmm. they, they're in place to do this. And I'm thinking, you know, here are these people that, you know, they're not even members of, uh, they're foreign nationals that aren't citizens here. They're just mm -hmm. they're living here mm -hmm. and they want to help and, and do what they can. And it just kind of made me think, well, you know, can I, it's, it's this question and, you know, it's a question we each have to ask of the calculated risks that we're willing mm -hmm. to take. Right. And so my question, and I mentioned it to my husband and he was not real thrilled. He's like, mm -hmm. okay, you know, I don't think so. And we're not even able to donate blood until like, oh, well, it's tomorrow. <laughs> Okay. They, they they open up tomorrow, I think, is when they open back up, or at least that's what they said. I don't know if now with the new mandates, if they're not mm -hmm. going to. But mm -hmm. anyway, you know, I think we all have to ask ourselves this question, and I am struggling with this right now. Am I getting stir crazy and I feel like I can't just be still? Because that's mm -hmm. not the right reason to go out and do things. True. Um when we moved here to Alaska from Arizona. Um, we, I had been, uh, the, the lead of our children's ministry. I had been very busy, little kids job. And I was also mm -hmm. working for my dad. So I'm like, you know, doing all this stuff, totally over busy, got here. There's this vacuum of, you know, we didn't right, even have a right. church and mm -hmm, there's no mm -hmm. activity. And I did start to feel stir crazy. Like I need to do something. Right. And you know, I think we all have to look within ourselves and think, okay, are we, oh, I, this has been teaching me that are we okay being still? And it's something I've always mm. struggled with. Mm -hmm. So what I'm praying about is number one, when my husband and I disagree on something, I typically will defer to him. If I feel mm -hmm. really strongly about it and I tell him that a lot of times he'll just say, okay, and let, you know, mm -hmm. not let mm -hmm. me do it, but you know what I no, mean? No, I know what you're saying. But on the other hand, like, here's how I look at it, especially when it's medical related. Right. Um, if we're both, if my husband and I aren't both a hundred percent on board and something does go wrong, like right. that's, that's really bad for the person who didn't want to do it in the first place. You right. know, like my, our son had had these tonsil tonsillitis problems for years and we actually were very strongly considering having his tonsils out back when we were still living really rural, but we weren't on a hundred percent the same page. And it was kind of like what you said. It was like, okay, well, we can do this, but you know, one of us was worried about the distance of, you know, like if something does go wrong, like, I don't, I don't remember if I told you, but it was like two weeks after the surgery and he woke up in the middle of the night, like one of his scabs was falling off and oh, yes. he ended up like kind of throwing up a, a decent amount of blood to the extent that if we weren't in a pandemic, I probably would have just called an ambulance right there. Yeah. Um, and so it, it made sense that you wouldn't want to be in that situation when you're a four, four hour drive right. from <laughs> medical care. And so for me, it's always been with, especially in the medical things that this isn't really a rule, but I kind of like to go with the more conservative because then if something did go wrong, like worst case scenario, you go donate blood and your husband's like, oh, I'm not really sure you should do this. You come home and get people sick. I mean, that's right. a, that's a terrible feeling. But I also yeah. like, so here's, here's something, um, is our blood transfusions part of the, my understanding is the COVID-19 really, it's more of a lung issue. Yeah. So, no, blood transfusions blood, are okay, more you just need on hand for the people who yeah, okay. Right. And they're just I, I think critically in my low. Mind, yeah, they're right. critically low just because people aren't able to get out exactly. and give blood. Right. Exactly. It's it has nothing to do with the pandemic. 
So part of me feels like if this was something, you know, how like everybody's pulling together to find protective equipment for, you know, first care responders and things like that. I feel like if this was something where like anybody who got ill with this disease needed blood, I think that that would be much more compelling. Right. But if the lots fact, of people. Exactly. You know, I don't know, but we still need the blood. I mean, heaven forbid, what if Alaska has another major earthquake? Do you know what I mean? And, you know, a lot of people are injured. So I could totally see it going both ways. But I think in our, in our family, the way this would work out is the more conservative, like, the person who's more concerned would probably be the one to more likely get their way just because like what a terrible strain on the relationship. If like, I never want my husband and I to be in the position where something horrible happens, especially to one of the kids. And one of us has a reason to be like, well, I kind of told you so. Like I I would hate to put our, our relationship in that kind of predicament. But again, oh, no. people need blood, you know, so. Yeah, but no, but I mean, our, our philosophy is usually if in a case like this, I, mm-hmm. I typically will say, you know what, God has placed us together and mm-hmm. he's giving Matt wisdom, you know, if he. True. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and what I would do going forward is say, God, if this is something you want me to do, change his heart, you know, have him mm-hmm. watch a documentary on yeah, how right. totally, you know, important it yeah. is to give blood and how safe it is. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then, you know, say, you know, I think you were right. And I, I would feel like that would be confirmation because I'm For with sure. you. I do not want to be the one to strong arm him. And it was the same with having children. It, it's a totally different thing, but I wanted another child after we had mm-hmm, our first mm-hmm. and he did not. And Ra- and I could have probably pushed the issue and just right. pounded him into the ground, yeah. but I didn't because I mm-hmm. knew that if he, if we went into it with him, not on the same page, mm-hmm. that it wouldn't be good for our marriage. Oh, for sure. I or mean, for he, that kid, you know, I mean, what if it was a real colicky baby and he was like, yeah, I could even move this kid around. I mean, I know that that's not what he would think at that point, but no, but yeah. he ended up totally like God changed his heart. Yeah. And then God, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, at the right time. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. But I just think that's something we all need to be thinking about during this time is number one, I think, you know, coming to terms with, is it okay to be still and, and not Mm -hmm. do, Mm -hmm. but at the same time doing what you can, like, you know, one thing that I, that like you've talked about face masks and, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe coordinating, creating, Mm -hmm. you know, making those. And there are lots of things that we can do that are, pretty much a hundred percent risk-free that can help. Prayer is obviously one that we can do right from our, uh, mm-hmm. right from, from our homes. So yeah. Or, yeah. Anyway, yeah. that's, that's, no, my, that would that's be interesting. my topic of the day. Yeah. But I, but I also get, I mean, people, yeah, we need to be watching out for our physical health, but we do need to be watching out for our mental health. You know, my husband still goes to work on weekdays, at least for a few hours in the morning. And right now, you know, going back to that idea of calculated risk, just for his personality and, you know, just kind of the need for schedule and routine. Like what I'm saying is he doesn't have to be at the office every day. He could do that sort of stuff from home. Um, but again, he's not like, he's usually the only person there and it's really good for him to have that sense of schedule mm-hmm. and routine. And so in this case, it is like an absolutely with all of our blessings, please go do what you need to do <laughs> to, you know, to, to make life feel as normal. So I think that especially now that we really are looking at this hunkered down period. I know you hate that term. We're looking at this shelter in place, um, whether whether you're in a place where it's a mandate or a suggestion or a law or whatever it is, you know, it's looking like we've got probably a couple months mm-hmm. of this, you know, like maybe, probably. And honestly, for me, that makes me feel more, more at peace. Like I heard this really interesting factoid about the prison system where people who are on death row, there's just, there's much less um, angst and there's just kind of the sense of resignation, like death row inmates rarely will get into fist fights or things like that because they just kind of get to a point like, Hey, this is what it is, you know? Mm. Um, And I kind of feel like now that we're, 
you know, like I know over the weekend, President Trump extended everything to at least the end of April. And now that I can kind of, and I think I already knew that, like, it's not a surprise, but now that it's becoming more certain that we're going to be home for, let's call it another two months minimum, that almost helps me to feel like now life life can go on. Like, I feel like for a couple of weeks, we were just sort of in a wait and see pattern. Right. And now that we're realizing, you know what, this is just going to be, this is going to be everyday life for a few months. It actually, for me, feels kind of freeing to be like, okay, well, like we're at the end of quarter one of the year. Yeah. I usually take that time to do a lot of reflecting. Like, what did I get done in quarter one? What do I want to happen? Like I set quarterly goals as opposed to annual goals. Mm -hmm. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm really going to look at like, you know what, I'm going to be home all a quarter two. If I'm not, okay, I can change, but I'm going to kind of look at it that way. And I feel like once you can kind of accept that, there's a lot of freedom that comes with that. So for example, like if I knew that we were just going to be hunkered down for two weeks, I, I probably would have been more likely to like tell my husband, you know, just stay home. Let's, let's get over this. Um, let's just, suck it up for two weeks and do what we need to do. Like we're, yeah. we'll live off of the groceries we've got here and we're, nobody's going anywhere. But now kind of knowing that we're talking months and that, you know, people do need to go out for groceries. People, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know, to me, I'm, I'm feeling it almost a better place. Like knowing that, yes, even the experts now are saying it's going to be months as opposed to weeks. Like even, do you remember like it started when the school systems like extended spring break by a week, you know, yeah. and that just felt like, okay, what's the week going to do? <laughs> right. You know, so I feel like now we almost have the blessing of resignation yeah. and realizing, okay, so, so now, now what do we want to do? We can kind of move, move away from a temporary holding pattern to what do we want this next three month period to look like? And so that's really what I'm focusing on is I'm just going to kind of go into it, assuming for three months, we're going to all be at home. And now that leads me to be like, okay, now we can create some structure. We can create right. some expectations and that's actually, so it's a good feeling in that way. I think it is too. And we're experiencing that too. Just, you know, the public schools in, at least in Alaska are this week is when uh, tomorrow is when they're actually implementing their distance learning. So oh, they've okay. had some stuff. They've, you know, they've had some things along the way, more official. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's, it's definitely official. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of felt, I, I felt like there was a lot of kind of wait and see and right. And now it's kind of now like, okay, what's <laughs> the new normal going to look like? Yeah. And let's have a little bit more structure and mm -hmm. and be okay with the way things are and, and make yeah. the best of it. And Exactly. Yeah. It's um, it's encouraging me. Like I had a couple weeks where I was just going to stress eat guilt-free. And now I'm kind of like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I made you choke on your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I almost snorted that out of my nose. <laughs> that That's okay. That would have been an episode for the, uh, <laughs> you remember when we used to make our blooper reels? We should go back to that. <laughs> oh, we have to. That would be funny. Yeah. There um, were some good ones. Yeah. But you know, now that I like, I'm totally fine putting, like treating my body poorly with what I eat for two weeks. I'm not okay with that for three months, you know? So it's just sort of those types of things of, okay, yeah. I feel like we're, we're moving out of survival mode and just, this is, this is how it's going to be for a few months. And so let's, you know, let's make sure we're exercising. Let's make sure we're eating okay, and and that type of thing. Yeah, no, I th I agree. I think I think this is this is going to be a, a long haul, and right. whatever mm -hmm. it looks like, I'm sure there'll be phases of it. And mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I I think it's healthy to to accept this chunk of it as this is the new normal. Let's yeah, do, yeah, as routine oriented as we can mm -hmm. during this time. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be good. Yeah. You know, I found that as an introvert, I'm actually like you would think, and, and truly this is, this is kind of like, um, this is the introvert's time to shine, you know, like oh, yeah. this is what we've been preparing for ourselves for our whole lives. <laughs> but like on Friday, I actually got peopled out <laughs> Because I had a call with my business coach, and then I went right from that to playing some games with the kids, and then I went right from that to doing a call where I was the business coach for a whole group of people, and then I had a couple hours of nothing, and then like two hours later, I was supposed to um, be on another call with my 
book club, which I, I was super looking forward to. But I was like, man, I'm just, I'm people that, I think that might've been the day that you and I were like, well, should we try to record? And like, no, my voice is shot. <laughs> Not to mention, I just want to be alone in my office. <laughs> who, who would have thought that like when there's nothing else going on, but you know, it makes total sense for moms too, especially, oh, yeah. you know, like I'm, I'm used to having the kids home, but I am being more on hands, hand, hands on. <laughs> like, no, that doesn't sound right. I mean, more hands on right now. Like we're, we are doing more games together and more just hang out time. Well, um, and your little one was sick for so long. You exactly. Were with him. Yeah, that was nonstop. Yeah, that was helping him. And, yeah. and so I realized like, man, who would have thought that you could get people out when like the only people I've seen face to face are <laughs> my own family. But no, you know, what's funny. So um, in Alaska news over the weekend was when our governor basically banned intrastate travel. Yeah, like um, inter-community travel. Mm -hmm, you can't mm -hmm. go community to community. Yeah, and so it actually, like, the first thing I thought, it was like, I can't go see Jamie. Like, not that I was going to, not that we had plans, but it was just this funny thought of, like, wow, yeah. now I can't, even if I wanted to. Like, I had this funny picture of us, like, meeting somewhere halfway between our houses and never even getting out of our cars, but you know, like <laughs> doing a recording. We're like, I see you. I'm like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> it really, it's funny. I, as soon as I heard that, I thought, oh my goodness. And not that I would go anywhere or exactly. that I was going anywhere, yeah. but there's this kind of trapped feeling like, mm -hmm, well, if mm -hmm, I wanted to go somewhere else, yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't be able to. It's kind of a funny feeling to know that you're not allowed it is it is between communities but uh yeah i'm i'm thankful that they're taking yeah. it seriously because I it's am necessary too. Mm -hmm. i think it's a good call for sure yeah so anyway i know one of your kiddos is going to need your computer set up pretty soon for school yeah. stuff or are they doing their music lessons today or what's no, going on he has this is my oldest and this will be his very first meeting with his class um cool his team so they divide them up into teams he's in middle school and so this is his first ever zoom meeting with his class the other little ones Good. have gotten to do a lot of like a few class mm -hmm. things and he hasn't mm -hmm. gotten to do any so it's pretty cool okay that'll be nice Fine. for him Awesome. Yeah. Do you want me to end with a devotional day from our... Let's do that. Yeah. If you've got time, let's do that this time. I think that'd be great. Yeah. Is there a topic or should I just go to day two? This is... Yeah. Let's just move just through. Go one by one. Yeah. Yeah. So while you're pulling that up, I will tell people where they can find it. Yeah. So this is kind of a an encouraging devotional to really just help you stay inspired and encouraged during this specific time. And so you can download it at prayingchristianwomen.com slash be the light. And yeah, let's, let's hear day two. I'm excited. All right. Day two is about um, praying for wisdom for leaders. We kind of touched on that in our last episode, but it's never, never, uh, enough prayer for these leaders. I don't envy any of them. And they're making these really just such grave decisions at every moment and every turn. They need our prayers every day. First um, Timothy 2, 1 to 2 says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Um, and, you know, the devotional part just talks about, you know, regardless of how you feel about your leaders and the decisions that they're making, um, pretty much I don't think any of them can win. <laughs> I mean, I think they're always going to be people that aren't happy no matter mm -hmm, what they choose. For sure. So rather than complaining, and I've shared along this, you know, COVID conversation journey, I've had a couple of moments of criticism toward decisions and things and we all just have to let go of criticism and go to God and just pray for these leaders because no matter what you think about them, they're making these decisions. They're the ones we, we don't have control over that, but we do have control over how much we pray for them. And God is the one that gives wisdom and, you know, we need to pray for them and we're urged to, and, and we can conduct ourselves with respect as believers um, in the way that we talk about our leaders, the way we interact with them, the way we um, support them, not that we have to agree with them all the time, but just, you know, that, that we don't turn to, you know, that we, we keep our criticism in check. Not that you want to just 
you know, agree with everything, but, but disagree with, with respect and in a way that would be honoring to God. Um, so um, I think they're all under a lot of pressure right now. Um, some of the leaders we can keep in mind are people making medical decisions at hospitals. We've touched on that in some of our episodes, um, just about how these hospitals are having to come up with policies, things like sharing ventilators or, um, you know, uh, the do not resuscitate, you know, whether or not to implement that or, you know, just all these different things that they're gearing up for what's going to happen when this really gets bad and they need our prayers. Local leaders, mayors, um, legislators, representatives that are coming up with laws to pass, um, our governors, um, presidents, prime ministers, world leaders, all of that. So yeah, whoever um, comes to mind is definitely someone we should be praying for. So today's prayer. Uh, Lord, we praise you for your infinite wisdom. There is none like you. We confess that sometimes we think that we know better than you do how this world should work, but we just thank you that you are God and we are not. We come before you and we ask that you would impart God-given wisdom to the leaders of our churches, communities, states, and countries, wisdom that cannot be gained by the world. Open their eyes to the right decisions when they aren't sure what to do. Give our church leaders wisdom to know how to maintain fellowship in the church while being stewards of life and minimizing contact. Help our education leaders make wise choices that will balance health and well-being with continued learning. Give our mayors, governors, presidents, prime ministers deep understanding of the big picture of this pandemic. Surround them with people who will steer them the right way in making sound decisions. Protect them for those who would lead them astray. For leaders who don't know you, we ask in the powerful name of Jesus that you would use this time to draw them to yourself. Make yourself known in ways that can't be explained away. Surround them with believers who will speak life and model Christ for them. Open doors that have been long closed for communication and cooperation among differing political parties and nations. Let there be a softening of hearts that will lead to peace and unity and be glorified in it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, and each of these come with a praise point and a be the light challenge. So the praise point is that God is wise and it comes with several scriptures you can look up just to meditate on God's wisdom. Um, and the be the light um, says, think of one leader you've been impressed with and thankful for during this crisis and send him or her a note or a gift with encouragement and thanks. Oh, what a neat idea. Yeah. I just think so many of our leaders need that feedback. I just think of us putting the podcast out there into cyberspace and would we get yeah. a response? It's like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, someone's listening and someone right. actually is benefiting. I feel like our leaders are probably the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, and they probably hear a they lot hear all of the complaints. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So think about that. That's fabulous. Well, thank you, Jamie. It's always fun to connect with you. Yes. And thanks to you guys listening in. And we'll talk to everybody soon. All righty. Bye.